Hello and welcome to Somerville Community Access Television and our continuing coverage of election 2016. No, not that election, our local state elections. As many of you know, the presidential election season is well underway and so are the elections for representatives on Beacon Hill in the Massachusetts legislature. As part of the mission of all community access television and media centers, which is to keep the public informed about our elected officials in government, we are pleased to bring to you the candidates for the 26th Middlesex District, which includes parts of Somerville and Cambridge. The Democratic Party candidates for the 26th Middlesex District are incumbent State Representative Timothy Toomey and challenger Michael Conley. Stay tuned and check your local listings for when this program will air on your local community access station throughout this election season. For SCAT TV, I'm Joe Lynch, and as always, stay safe, stay informed, and please don't forget to vote. Thank you. Hello and welcome to this candidate profile of Michael Conley, a candidate for a state representative for parts of Cambridge and Somerville, the 26th Middlesex District. Mike grew up in public housing, earned his higher educational degrees from Duke University and Boston College Law. He currently resides with his wife in Cambridge. Mike's advocacy and grassroots, grassroots leadership involvement have focused on campaign finance reform, legislative accountability, climate control issues, affordable housing, open space, and transit and traffic issues. Mike will face State Representative Incumbent Tim Toomey in the September 8th primary. It is my pleasure to welcome to this program Democratic candidate and challenger for the 26th Middlesex District, Mike Conley. Welcome back to SCAT TV. Thank you so much, yep. Joe. Thank you for pleasure having me. Pleasure to have you. It's pleasure uh, to have th you. Thank you to SCAT TV and, and thank you for hosting us today. You're quite welcome here in the middle of our finally hot summer. Starting to warm up. There Absolutely. You go. So, Mike, you're going to be you're going to be requesting the voters to listen to you and to hopefully vote for you on September 8th, which is primary day. Um, a little bit more about yourself, if you will, and then the issues that you hear the voters are telling you. You know, East Somerville, East Cambridge, over into the Inman Square District. That's kind of the the representative district. Take it away. Absolutely, and and maybe the first thing, as you were saying, September 8th, I kept hearing. Thursday, September 8th. It's an unusual uh, election day. It'll be the Thursday right after Labor Day. Right. And um, as you indicated, I'm, I'm running for state representative really because I think it's time for some new voices and some new leadership in the state legislature, leadership that will reflect the progressive values that we have here in Somerville and in Cambridge. And you know, my desire to serve, it really comes from my own personal background. Um, as you mentioned, I was raised in public housing uh, by my mother. She was a single mom. She struggled with some health issues for a while, and I was actually bounced into the foster care system for a while. Um, I then moved back with her, uh, grew up in public housing, benefited from things like Head Start growing up, free lunch in school, and, you know, if you can picture that situation, certainly faced uh, my share of adversity. But fortunately, you know, with the help of uh, an extended family and, and community mentors, um, and also my size, you, you, people may not know at home, but I'm, I'm six foot eight and pretty big guy. Um, I was able to get an athletic scholarship to Duke University. From there, I went on to Boston College Law School and became an attorney. I worked in the technology sector for a couple of years, and so. I was really fortunate to really access a great education, great employment. I met my wife here in Somerville, and um, you know, I really feel great about that. But as my life progressed, I also reflected on how many kids who I grew up with, my peers in public housing, and and how so many of them never really, you know, had the opportunities that I had. They weren't necessarily able to access higher education or or you know a great job in the and they weren't world. six foot four and they weren't six foot eight <laughs> six, foot, six eight, foot eight or five foot twenty as I like <laughs> to say sometimes but um, and so it's really that perspective and that experience that informs my my politics and my desire to serve the community because as we look out in Somerville and Cambridge 
we see tremendous opportunity, but we also see so many people who are looking for direction, who are asking, how do I access that opportunity? And I think it's so important, you know, again, that we promote some new voices into the state legislature and that we look for new leadership so that we can really make good in all the potential that we have in our community. So should, Mike, sh should you be successful on Thursday, September 8th, yes. um, where do you take some of those things, you know, how do you create those, those opportunities, especially when it comes to affordable housing, transportation, jobs in the, in the district that you're hoping to represent? Great question. So I think the place to start, I would, I would suggest, would be transportation. Transportation not only is important in its own right for the environment, it also is the connector to jobs. It also has a great impact on our housing market. And, you know, I think if you, if you start with things like the MBTA, right now, today, we have well over a $7 billion uh, deficit when it comes to our maintenance and our state of good repair backlog. And so I think we need to start by making big investments in things like the MBTA. We have to invest in affordable housing. We have to invest in higher ed. And if we look at the, the past 15, 20, 25 years, what we've seen is, unfortunately, we haven't made the progress that we'd like. You know, it's been a good 26 years since the state committed to building the Green Line extension. And unfortunately, today, we're, we're still unsure when or how that will get done. We've seen um, some compromises and some cuts on the Somerville community path, another issue that I think is very important for all of us. And so I, th I think that the, the way forward has to be to raise revenue in, in a variety of ways. A what would you be in favor of, Mike, in terms of raising that revenue? I think we have to start to look at the people who can afford to pay more. So certainly the millionaires, certainly higher income earners. I'm not interested in raising revenue on the backs of working people or poor people, but I think, you know, we have the number one inequality here in, in Massachusetts nationwide. We're the highest in inequality, so we have to address that. And that might also mean, you know, looking to things like General Electric. You know, you, you, uh, many of us have heard the stories of how, you know, they came to Boston and, and were quickly offered things like tax, tax credits. credits and that kind of thing. And so I think the legislature has to uh, look at comprehensive ways to invest in our community. You know, one statistic that I recite a lot when I'm talking to folks out on the campaign trail, and it, it's truly uh, shocking, if you took our state budget around the year 2000 and you adjusted it for inflation, it would be well over $3 billion more than it is today on an annual basis. So year after year after year, we are falling billions of dollars behind in our investments. What's the major reason for that, though? Is it because we are saddled with the debt that we cannot raise the investment money to put into the programs that we should be putting them into? That's part of it, but I think the biggest thing was around the turn of the century, uh, there were some rosy economic projections and there were a series of different tax cuts that were implemented based on those projections, but those projections n never played out the way that, that we were promised. Well, and then 2007, 2008 hit and all bets were off. Right. Yep. And so certainly, you know, here in this community, um, I'm looking to people like Rep. Denise Provo, who, who has been, you know, very eloquent in, in her analysis of of the money that's been lost and the need to, to raise more revenue. And so certainly I think that has to be uh, a top priority um, moving forward. That's on the transportation side. How about on the education side? Hope, what are you hoping to accomplish and what are the voters saying? On the education side, you know, certainly universal early childhood education for every child in the Commonwealth. And, and I'll give credit, I think Somerville does a really good job in this regard. I think we can always do better, and I think we have to look to every child and, and make sure that everyone can access all of the early ed, all of the after-school programs that we can possibly invest in. And you know, as I mentioned in the intro, um, I benefited from a Head Start program as a kid, and then what do you know, I, get, I had the opportunity to go on to Duke and, and study computer science. I had the opportunity to go to Boston College Law and become an attorney. 
And I know for a fact, if it wasn't for that Head Start program, the odds of any of those other things happening would have been a million to one. And so I'm asking the question in this campaign, why is it, you know, 30 plus years after I had that Head Start program, why can't we guarantee all of the early education, all of the after school programs um, that we could possibly ask for? And so I think that's a, a big goal. And certainly here in Somerville, uh, when it comes to education, I look to someone like State Senator Pat Jalen, who I think has been um, truly the leading voice on these issues. Um, and while we're on the topic of education, I'll say another issue of concern for me is uh, charter schools. And I'm, I'm certainly very, um, very uh, skeptical of the, the push to lift the cap on charter schools. And my position, again, taking leadership from people like Senator Jalen, I think we need to keep the cap on charter schools. And we need to focus on ensuring that every child has all the early education we could ask for. I know that lifting the cap has become an issue within the district here, not only in your race, but in the state senate race as well. So for a little bit, Mike, you know, when we talk about education and the programs that you benefited from, what seems to be the problem on Beacon Hill in terms of funding those programs that have a proven track record? Uh, you know, I think it's a great question. I think a lot of us progressives are sometimes left scratching our head. Um, right now, you know, the House is led by a speaker who, believe it or not, his mantra currently is no new taxes, you know, and that's, that's a familiar mantra that we heard from uh, George H.W. Bush many years ago. And I think that, you know, that direction of saying we can't raise taxes, we can't raise revenue, I think that really is at odds with the progressive character of uh, the voters and of our communities here in Somerville and Cambridge. And so I think we have to uh, build coalitions and work together to try to overcome this resistance. And certainly um, now that Governor Charlie Baker is, has assumed office as well, there seems to be uh, some unfortunate resistance to raising revenue from both the governor and the Speaker of the House. So certainly my intention as, uh, as a state representative would be to partner with other progressive champions here in Somerville and across the Commonwealth to really build momentum for increased revenue across the board. I can, I can safely assume this, that you are um, labeling yourself as a progressive Democrat, because I heard you say progressive at least five times. But absolutely. before we end, I, do, I told you the 13 minutes, 15 minutes goes very, very quickly, Michael. Before we end, how can people learn more about your stance on the issues and get in touch with you, your website and maybe some other contact info? Indeed, thank you. Uh, the website is mikeconnelly.org, so uh, pretty straightforward. On Twitter and on Facebook, uh, we have accounts. It's Mike Connolly MA, as in Massachusetts. Um, so Mike Connolly MA on social media, MikeConnolly.org. Um, you can email me at Mike at MikeConnolly.org. Terrific. Pleasure to have you. Best wishes on September 8th. Thank you so much for having me. Thursday, Thursday September, September 8th. 8th. My guest has been Mike Connolly, candidate for the 26th Middlesex District. Stay tuned for more from Somerville Community Access Television. As always, thanks for watching. Hello and welcome to this candidate profile of Timothy Toomey, the current state representative for parts of Cambridge and Somerville for the 26th Middlesex District. First elected to the State House of Representatives in 1992, he is a former member of the Cambridge School Committee and is a current Cambridge City Councilor a position he has held since 1989. A native Canterburyan, he grew up in the East Cambridge neighborhood and has earned his degree in government from Suffolk University. Tim Toomey's work, in addition to the many constituent services he and his staff provide, focuses on legislation surrounding public safety, gun control, LGBT rights, legislation policy reform, and open and transparent government. Representative Toomey will face Democratic challenger Michael Conley in the September 8th primary this year. It is my pleasure to welcome back to Somerville Community Access Television and this program, 
State Representative Tim Toomey. Thank you, Joe. First you of all, are, thank you and SCAF for providing this uh, public service You are quite program. welcome. It's great. Part of your district here. You yeah, are in uh, Union Square. Yep. Tim. Remember when it was the firehouse? Uh, when Not it was the old firehouse. Age, yeah. Sure, okay. sure, sure. And now uh, we're expanding, so hopefully we can find a bigger firehouse someday. <laughs> but uh, welcome back. Thank you. Running for re-election. Number of terms? This um, first elected in 1992, so yep. I'm finishing. Uh, as you know, I was also on the Cambridge School Committee and, yes. and currently also serve as Cambridge City Councilor. So I've had an election every year since 1991. So it's been <laughs> 25 years of straight elections. But I love it and enjoy it and looking forward to another election, another campaign. Um, as you know, I certainly, uh, when my last election, the next day I'm out campaigning again. I just don't start campaigning two months before an election. It's an ongoing process with me. I feel it's important to have a strong presence in our communities, and I think people can will readily acknowledge that they see me in Sumble, in Cambridge, um, provide which my staff uh, outstanding constituent services, and I think that's a big part of what, what it's all about. Uh, as you know, and you can see the changes that are happening in Cambridge, in Somerville, are quite dramatic, quite, quite dramatic. I mean, I grew up in near Kendall Square, and 20 years ago there was nothing there. Now it's a 24 hours seven day a week uh, community. Uh, residents, uh, restaurants, life sciences. Assembly Square, you can see the big changes over Assembly Square. Big issue that I'm facing every single day with my staff is uh, affordable housing. People coming into my office, calling, being displaced, being priced out, and how do we try to maintain that diversity and affordability of, the, of our communities? Uh, you know, it's been the working class. Uh, families have made some of Cambridge the great cities they are. But as new people, you know, everyone's attracted. Some of them in Cambridge, you know, they're great places to live, to work, and to, and to have recreation. And so people want to come here. So what happens, the housing prices uh, are, uh, increase dramatically. Working very closely a lot of times with the some of the community corporations, right around the corner from us in Washington Street, they're building affordable housing units. They've recently acquired the uh, American Legion Post on, on Glen Street to uh, uh, assist in that. And they've done other projects for St. Pauli Cops. So, uh, and a new program, Tim, excuse me, a new yep. program that I understand they have. I was speaking to the executive director. Is they're actually buying up maybe two family, three family homes right. and trying to supplement some of the larger, uh, the larger developments that they're doing, which I think is a great way for trying right. to keep people in, in the, the communities community. right. that they grew up in. Right. As you know, some of the, we're not creating any more land, so we have to deal with what is here now and how do we make that. I worked very closely to increase for the 20% inclusionary zoning, which is going to be happening. Some of Cambridge is now in the process of doing the same thing. One of the issues we've had in Cambridge, we've had some opposition to us because uh, of increased density. And we had a project in, uh, in, 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 in Central Square, uh, Mass and Main, which I believe my opponent did oppose. But that was 50 units of affordable housing was going to be in, in, in that development. But it was, it's a 17-story building. So it, it's high, but it's on right in Central Square. There's mass transit there. Most of the people are going to be moving into the, the, that uh, development work in the nearby life sciences, Kendall Square. So the impact you know, on the neighborhoods, would we rather have people not buying the homes that are in the neighborhood, the two or three families are pricing people out. This way, you, know, you build up, have some more density, and 50 units of affordable housing in and one building is very important. And the issue, Tim, I think sometimes when you have opposition to that, it usually, in my mind, here in Somerville, things I've been involved in, it focuses it around um, parking. I mean, is that the major issue when the, uh, an opposite? Well, I'll opposes? give you one a figure in Cambridge, and, I, and I'm not sure about the Somerville one. Even though we've increased our population by over between six and 10,000, the number of our parking permits have actually decreased by 3,000. 3,000 less parking permits have been issued, even though the population, most of the new people coming in, and I, I think you can say this for Somerville too, they're, they're either walking or on bicycles. You go to Bacon Street, or public, Hips, transportation. public transportation, yep. and which is very important why we're fighting, you know, the Somerville delegation, the mayor and the board, I mean, we've all been working very hard to make sure that the Green Line extension is, comes to fruition. That's been a, a very uh, ongoing battle to make sure that the money is there, but w you know, we've had great support. It's a great delegation and the, with the mayor and the board working together. The Assembly Square, the Orange Line stop, you know, that, that has been a gr great addition. Uh, so there's, the mass transit is, is very important. So, but with the mass transit though, it again brings people who could displace other people. So it's that balance and that's why, especially along the route the, the Green Line is going, most of those are two and three family homes. So with SEC and other um, agencies like that, purchasing that, I, 
think could stabilize for those individuals. Yeah. So, you know, gentrification, Tim, is always a double-edged sword. It is. You right. know, it, 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 it like it, you liken it to you have to keep new customers coming in, but you really don't want to annoy or displace your mm. older customers. Right. I hate right. to make residents sound like their right. customers, but you've been pr doing constituent service for many, 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 many mm. years. What do you think the answer is? I mean, it's not one magic bullet. It's not just more affordable no. housing. It, it, it's not, and, and unfortunately, we're, as we see in the federal level, we're not going to be getting any additional money from uh, the, from the federal government uh, for affordable housing and many other issues. Uh, the state, we are in a very uh, we haven't uh, July first is the beginning of the fiscal year. Yep. They're estimating even before we even get there that we're going to be close to a billion dollar shortfall. You just finished budget. up the budget. We just finished it. Yeah. We haven't even, you know, we just did a 12 budget, 12 month budget uh, to keep the, the government going because the conference committee hasn't come up with a thing. But there's possibility that there could be some cuts coming even at the beginning of July uh, to a lot of the agencies. So it's a very, it's a very challenging time. And I think, you know, uh, I think certainly, um, I think uh, hopefully my constituents and the voters would recognize that the, the leadership and the commitment that I and my colleagues have shown uh, is very important. I think it's very important that that, that continues um, in these challenging times. And state reps and city councilors can only do so much in terms of job creation. That's the other side of the equation. It's not just pricing people out, it's creating people jobs, are better paying jobs so they can afford to right. stay here. Well, how, do, how does that shape up over the next year or so if you're successful again in uh, uh, September? How's it gonna shape up? I mean, have we got a jobs report in Massachusetts that but the promising. unemployment rate is okay, um, but the, 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 what I'm concerned about is, th is those ki kids who graduate from high school not necessarily going to college. So a lot of, you know, Kendall Square and Summer Square, there's a lot of uh, specific jobs there. But what, what we all need jobs for kids with voc vocational education is very, very important. Um, and train them for the manufacturing, of the, you know, as these life sciences now uh, develop these um, uh, products that these kids are able to be part of that and uh, you know uh, trained the to which of those for the no type of jobs I mean right. that's very important so uh, there, we are doing an economic development uh, um, bill that's coming out I think next week and it'll be interesting to see what's in that so uh, that that's the the big part I mean you know a lot of kids and you know the some of the school system is doing an outstanding job their, their scores are really off the charts um, was proud with Working with the mayor, the East Summer Community School, when they had the fire a couple of years ago, working with the community, the staff, and the principal, that was done. The, the students testified at the hearing at the state house to just to, to make sure that happened quick. That took it, it was record time for the state to come up with the money for, for that. The and the city's state, now looking to do the high school over at, at a very hefty price. Yeah, so. a little. Di a li <laughs> I, I've seen the hefty price, <laughs> yeah. um, but a little bit of a different thing. It was my understanding the state did not have an emergency fund set up for when you had well, a cast catastrophic yeah, event. Like that. And the, so working, it was together. the state delegation and that the mayor did. of the city of Somerville who really got the right. funding for that thing through. Tim, I know that this time goes very, very short. Oh. But education-wise, what's happening in terms of the state educational system? Have we got um, any more promising news in terms of folks who may want to go on to state colleges? Well, the education um, is, you know, we, we were disappointed we didn't get the money this time for the early, early childhood education. I think that's where it starts. And I think more resources and more uh, funding to, uh, to begin at that early age. I think that's where, where, where it all starts. And, you know, you, you start to lose kids after seventh, eighth grade. And so if, if those proper resources aren't there at the beginning of the, the child's uh, educational, um, then, then things sort of uh, uh, go not the way they should, I guess you could say. And so um, we've put additional money into education, uh, higher education. The Senate House had a, different, a little bit of um, amount of the funding there, uh, but we've certainly been strong proponents of higher education. Can we put more money? They're absolutely. But again, as I said before, the challenge is now is with the shrinking pie, how do you allocate? When you put more money into higher education, are you taking it from public safety? Are you taking it from other resources? Um, one of the thing, big things that we've been working on, and some of all especially, is either some of overcoming uh, addiction. I mean, there's a big problem. We were, I think, a 38% increase in uh, 
in opiate prevention um, monies over the past two years, you know, for additional beds and additional resources for those people who are suffering. It's a statewide program, I think, uh, problem. It, we've seen um, so many young people uh, die, but Somerville that has a great um, program that uh, there's a group that is very, very active. There was a, a road race just a couple of weeks ago at the Blessing of the Bay for the, I think it was the Ryan Harrington Foundation mm -hmm. to raise the money to raise awareness and, you know, I know a lot of people are very involved with that. Jesse, Judy, and Joanne, and, and uh, certain Corey from Cambridge that works with SCAP. Uh, so that to me, uh, you know, I've been doing a lot of attention to that uh, education. For, for yeah, I'm not. Su I'm not supposed to favor one candidate over another, but all this, all the events I go to in Somerville, I see you there. And that, I think that's it's not favoring I try. You, no, Tim, I try. I don't, you know, but I, I do. I try. I, I just think it's important. I think it's important to be part of the community. The, the people see you there, and they can come up to you, and that's how you, you know, interact. And you know. So, what are the voters telling you? What are the major issues in this campaign that you're going to see? Not that election, Tim. Not that national election. Yeah. The, uh, the local election here. What are they saying? I think it is the the affordability is certainly a big part of it. Uh, there's just no question about that. Um, employment, people um, you know, being trained properly for these jobs is a big part of it. Um, you have a large immigrant population that um, that is in, in both communities. Um, we're really putting pressure on people to become citizens because we don't know th what's going to happen. So I great, get great satisfaction when you know we get somebody into the program and become citizens and, and are sworn in and now are part of the process. So. Um, but, but clearly the, the transitioning from the, I, I don't want to see the communities become the communities of the haves and the haves not. And that, that really You think it's too me. late? You think we're already there? It's close to that, but I, but I think, you know, I think a lot of organizations, a lot of people are committed to, to not letting that completely happen, but it, it's, it's a challenge. It's it really public is. and private. You know, the, the public sector can't do it all, the right. private sector can't do it all. Tim Toomey, I told you these interviews go very, very Is fast. Over, so, right? <laughs> yeah, well, we're almost over, but well, I want to give you an opportunity. Where can people find more about the campaign? Well, uh, TimToomey.org yep. is in, um, just call me. I have a district office at 550 Camera Street. Um, just stop me on the street, or, which happens quite a bit, which is great. Um, I just feel that... Uh, you know, as part of being the legislator and the city council, most important is really being a public servant. Is what I've always considered myself as to be a public servant, is to help people navigate the system and maybe those who are not uh, able to uh, access ser services that, you know, we make sure that they get those services that they, that they need and deserve. So, um, but just about help. I know it sounds simple, but it's just about helping people and being out there and people. Um, That's what you that. do. That's what we do. That's what you um, do. Best wishes, Tim Toomey. Oh, thank Toomey. you, Joseph. Thank you. Running for re-election in the uh, 26th Middlesex District. Just make sure district. it's Thursday, September 8th. Thursday, it's very important September people 8th, understand 2016. that. 2016. Yeah. I want to thank Tim for joining me on this program. As always, stay safe, stay informed. See you next time.